Hi, I'm, there. I'm Mario Guerra, former mayor of the great city of Downey, and I'm here with my co-host, Eric Pierce, the editor of the Downey Patriot, and we're doing today with a great guest, but we're here today talking Downey with Mario and Eric. We're here, glad to have Dave Lopez with us today as our guest. Well, welcome, Dave. It's well, good to you. see you. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. I, I moved to Downey uh, with my family in 1977. But my history of Downing goes even further back. Uh, my mom and dad bought a house in Southgate in 1955. Oh, wow. And my father went into business at a postery shop called Garfield Postery in 1960. Oh, my goodness. And I was 12 years old at the time when he went into business. And some of his uh, better clients, the more upscale clientele that he used to cater to, was from Downing. Oh, wow. And so he used to do a lot of business in Downing. And uh, I played a lot of sports, and we played a lot of teams from Downing. So, uh, it's been a been a long, long uh, relationship with this uh, nice city. They, Downey has always claimed you as one of their own. <laughs> Absolutely. And I want to thank you for being here because you're at, you're bringing a sense of credibility to your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for well, being we here. got a big name like Dave, you know, Dave well, Lopez here, yeah, so okay. that's great. Anyway, so. well, listen, no, no, it's it, it's nice. I mean, uh, I moved here in 1977, as I said. My uh, kids uh, went throughout the Downey schools. Uh, went to uh, they both went to East Middle School. Now it's called Doty, yeah. and they both went to uh, Downey High School. And I, I always remember people would always say to me, "Why don't you have your kids in private school? You know, you make good money." Blah, blah, blah. You say, yeah. "Assume right. that since you're right. TV doesn't mean you make big right. money, but why don't you go to private school?" And I, I would tell them, "I said, Downey has a phenomenal yeah. school district, mm -hmm. yeah. and I, and I'm very very proud of the fact that uh, both my kids graduated with the top 15% uh, of their class. In fact, my son was number four, my daughter was number I think she was number 15. Oh, that's great! And they both went to college and uh, awesome. both very successful careers now. That's so awesome. uh, Downey's got a very soft spot in my heart. I still go to church in Downey, oh. and when the Y was open, I used to go to the Y every every day. Mm -hmm. I, I miss the Y. Hopefully, I can bring it. it back. Yeah, that's what we were we were just talking about it right before. Uh, we used to see each other at the YMCA, and thank you for doing a, a video. Dave is helping us uh, to, to help rebuild the Y and so forth. So uh, we'd always see Dave on the treadmill. Uh, I think with Greg Welch, I think, was your personal Yeah, trainer. Greg was my personal <laughs> trainer. Yeah, he, he, was my, he tried to get me in shape, you know. You know, yeah, I know. So, so Dave, so tell us all this. So you have a book, and we're, we want to yeah. we hear about your book well, thank and, you. and uh, the well, thought behind yeah. it. Well, I'll hold it up. It's, it's, called, it's, it's a great life if you don't weaken. Uh, a Family, Faith, and 48 Years on Television. This is the book right here. This is the uh, copy, and it's going to be coming out on uh, April the 17th. And the reason I picked April 17th is that would have been my mom and dad's uh, 75th uh, wedding anniversary. Oh, uh, very nice. It's a story about uh, my life growing up in a very large Mexican-American family, eight children, I'm the oldest of eight. Oh, wow. And uh, my mother and father uh, were both born in Mexico. My father became a U.S. citizen when he served uh, for the Army in World War II. Oh, no. My mom became a citizen shortly after entering high school. And um, it was just a great life. Uh, and I jotted down all the memories and all the stories that I covered in my four. I couldn't get them all in, but I didn't want to write a book just about, well, I covered this and this and this right. and behind the stories. I wanted to blend in what it was like growing up in the family that I grew up in and uh, all the other things that happened in, in my life. And so I chronicled it. We got about 278 pages in it, lots of pictures. And uh, I think it'll be a fun read. I mean, I hope people enjoy it. Oh, great. We're looking forward to it. Thank what you. was the process like writing the book? It was, uh, it was much more difficult than I thought. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I, uh, well, you, you know what it's like. You wrote yeah. one. Uh, but it, it's, it's not easy. Uh, I, 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 I wanted to get all my thoughts down. I had, I had a wonderful woman that helped me, you know, put mm -hmm. everything together. Uh, without her, it wouldn't have been possible. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Julie McCarran is her name, and she's got a, a long history of doing this kind of stuff. And she was a godsend. Uh, but it was fun. I mean, uh, you know, you, you try to remember things uh, as best you can. Uh, you can't locate everything on Google. You know, yeah. you thought you could, but you can't. Yeah. Uh, but um, I, I just wanted to paint a picture of uh, what it was like uh, having the kind of career I did. Not, not too many guys lasted with one station yeah. 43 years. Yeah, and I think that was the, the, the staple that we had. We could see Dave Lopez, yeah. see him on Channel 2, and know that, and then, you're right, we did claim it. Every time we saw, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Dave it Lopez was, is on. It was me <laughs> yeah. to see Dave on TV. It was, it was. Well, like I said, I, I, always, I always enjoyed this town. This town was good to me and to my family. Uh, but, but like I said, I, I covered a lot of big stories. Uh, probably, probably the one that created the most headlines uh, was the story of the freeway killer, William Bonner, yeah. who lived in Downey. Wow. And at the time that all these killings were happening, uh, we didn't know he lived in Downey. Yeah. He got arrested. Right. Uh, and that one, that, one, that one hit hard. Wow. Uh, 
that one I, uh, I wound up getting a confession from him and it led to all kinds of uh, uh, complications with the law and what have you, the, the, the shield law, you know, reporters right. not being required to reveal their sources. Right. In this case, I never knew who my source was, it was right. Bonnet. Right. But what I didn't want to do was put everything out that I didn't put in my story. Right. So after a long, complicated process, I proved my point, and then I wound up, I wound up testifying. It got, got some criticism. It's all chronicled mm -hmm. in the book. Wow. Uh, politically, there was a guy named uh, Duval uh, from, uh, in Sacramento who yeah. had his uh, Little, little dalliances, if you would, with people, and, and he had an open mic one day and uh, talked about it, and we got the tape, and the next wow. day after, after the story ran, he, uh, he resigned. What was interesting about that story, I'm in Sacramento doing the story, and, and the story blows up that night. The next day I go in, and Karen Bass, who's running for, right, for mayor right now, right. uh, she was the president of the uh, Senate, I think, state Senate at the time. Uh, I think she was speaker. Speaker. She was speaker. Oh, all right, speaker. speaker. Okay. All right. Anyway, so I go into her office to try to get a, uh, a reaction, and I, I walk into her office, and she's there. And, and I said, "Hello, Miss Bass. My name is Dave Lopez with Channel." She, oh, we all know who you are. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, that, that, those are probably the two uh, biggest stories that I that I covered and I chronicle those in the book. Wow. Dave, what gave you satisfaction <coughs> as a reporter? Was it nailing like a politician? Or what? What kind of gave you that? That or covering the you know, I, you something know, like that? I, I, yeah, sure. That that was a big. Mm -hmm. you, know, you always love to get the the big story, the big mm -hmm. scoop, that maybe the interview that no one else got. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, in my career, I was able to get a few of those. Uh, you know, uh, I, I hated to always play. I hated to be second fiddle mm -hmm. to any story that I did. Yeah, you know, not that I'm saying that I never was, but I just hated yeah. it. Right. Uh, but I just love the idea of of telling stories. And helping people, I I, uh, I used to uh, really enjoy doing stories where uh, someone was being wronged or someone needed help, yeah. and our story wound up, you know, making it better for them. Yeah. Uh, one time there was a story we did about some guy who always collected toys for <coughs> for uh, Christmas. Mm -hmm. and it was somewhere in Garden Grove, and somebody broke into his place and stole everything. So we did a story, and he wound up having more toys yeah. than ever before. So that kind yeah. of stuff is heartwarming. Yeah. I love those kind of heartwarming stories. Yeah. Uh, but going after, yeah, the per people that were doing wrong, people that were, uh, you know, making it difficult on other people, mm -hmm. sure. I, the, that, that, that was, uh, but, but it was just the idea of, of, of being a, a people type of reporter. Yeah. Telling stories that, that people enjoyed and listened to. Did, did you always want to be a reporter? Was yeah, I did. How did your process? Yeah, did I did. I, I'm, as a young kid, uh, I was in the fifth grade, mm -hmm. and I wrote an essay, and I said in there that I, I wanted to be a sports announcer. That was my big thing. I wanted to be. Oh, uh, we all wanted to yeah. do that. I wanted to go in the locker room, interview people. I didn't know what I was doing, but yeah. I, I wanted. I wanted to replace either Chick Hearn or yeah. um, That was my big goal, and I loved playing sports. Yeah. Uh, I but I realized at a very young age that I wasn't going to be tall enough or good enough to play pro sports, and so I started out as a sports announcer. I started out yeah. writing for the Huntington Park, the Southgate Press first. Then the Huntington Park Daily Signal. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Oh my gosh! I remember the day I used to throw all that paper. I, was, I had a paper out for yeah, the Huntington yeah. Park Daily Signal. Yeah, yeah, 19. Yeah. I know, Eric. That was before you were even born, dude. <laughs> that was before yeah. the internet. Absolutely. Yeah, I was. Well, I, way before the internet. I, I, I was a uh, I was a newspaper boy. I, I covered the Herald Examiner. Oh my god. You know god. That, that, that was yeah. my, that was my route, Herald yeah. Examiner. But uh, no, I always wanted to be uh, in some kind of journalism. The ultimate goal was to be in sports, and then I, I realized that the, the quickest way for me to get on television would be through news. Mm -hmm. And after four and a half, five years at Channel 9, from 1972 to 76, those four years, uh, mainly sports, mm -hmm. I got hired in San Diego by a wonderful man named Pete Noyce, who uh, in his very gruff voice said, uh, I'll hire you, but you're not gonna be a sports reporter for me, you're gonna be a, a newsman. <laughs> <laughs> and and that, that changed my life and changed my career. Wow, that's that awesome. was in 1976. Well, that's interesting because you you know obviously got the, the the voice the suave voice on there for you know for radio. You have both the, the looks and the voice for TV, but <laughs> the, the voice definitely for TV. I mean for radio. Thank you. No, yeah. the, the the one thing that I learned very very early in this career is that uh, you have to stay on top of your game. Yeah. I mean I I started to put a list together of all of the different people that I work with as reporters, editors, producers, yeah. and it would have been too long. I mean, it would have been, you know, I mean, it would have been in the hundreds. I worked for 21 news directors wow. in the time that I was in, in TV at Channel wow. Two. That was just at Channel Two, yeah. you know, 20, wow. uh, 20, uh, 
general managers. Wow. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. ton, you know, tons of different reporters and what have you. I mean, it's a tough business. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible to stay somewhere for 43 years, yeah. but it's highly unlikely today. Yeah. I think you're one of the dinosaurs in the good way from that because you're right. Today, you see people moving up, but you were there and you were just the staple that we saw and, and it was it was great for us yeah. you know well thank you i mean i was very fortunate um i i one of the one of the early breaks that i got at channel two was when they moved me to orange county mm -hmm. uh i was uh i got hired in 1977 uh covered a little bit of the hillside Strangler case mm -hmm. uh, there was a tremendous rainstorm uh that that winter in la and there was all kinds of flooding what have you covered all of that yeah. And I thought I was doing pretty well. I mean, I, I thought I was rolling and, and really going to, you know, make some headways yeah. in Los Angeles. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, they call me in one day. And this uh, almost like a, a year to the day that I started, they say, well, starting Monday, you're going to be in Orange County. And I, I said, <laughs> what? What? The station had expanded, and they yeah. wanted to put an Orange County reporter out yeah. there. And I spent 32 years there. But wow. what they did for me, which was a very lucky break, is that I just wasn't married to Orange County. Uh, they knew that I had a strong background in L.A., yeah. so whenever big stories broke in L.A., I would always yeah. come back and, and cover that. Absolutely. And then um, 2010, uh, they lost one of their really good reporters, a guy named Mark Coogan, who's a terrific reporter. He retired. And the news director said, I want you to come back to L.A. And uh, it was a no-brainer for me. Yeah. I went back, and that's why I finished my career. Wow. Dave, on TV, you've always come across as very serious mm -hmm. and almost stoic. Is that how you are in real life? Well, it depends. I mean, I, I like to have a good time. I mean, I, I like to think I have a sense of humor, a dry sense of humor. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes people don't get my humor. But uh, no, I mean, I, I never wanted to, you know, it's hard to be smile and peppy when you're, mm -hmm. I, I covered a lot of tragedy, yeah. a lot of tragedy. Yeah. And I always try to set the tone right. of, of what, what, I, uh, what I was covering. You know, I mean, uh, so you, well, you, have to be, you have to be able to adjust. Well, you also, I mean, you know, what was it like? You covered the OJ case. I mean, OJ Simpson case. I mean. Well, that was crazy. That, so, that was a wild, wild, wild case. You know, I, uh, I was assigned to do the, uh, the coverage outside the courtroom. And it was like covering a circus every day. Yeah. You know, I mean, Johnny Cochran and all his entourage would come in, and it was yeah. just rows and rows of media. I'd never seen anything like it in my life. Yeah. It was just, just incredible. And, and I, I remember OJ very, very well because when I was a young reporter, I had a, a, a boss by the name of Cliff Gawicki who wrote an article on OJ. And I remember he invited me to go meet this guy. No, nobody knew who OJ was. Yeah. I mean, we knew he was just going to be this big phenomenal running back from San Francisco. Right. And I remember meeting him and his wife going with Cliff, him and his wife and his little child at the time, Arnell. And just the nicest guy. Yeah. And in the times that I covered, uh, I used to do the sports and I would cover OJ. Uh, always friendly, never a problem. Yeah. Uh, I would take my kids on vacation and he had a, uh, it was Hertz, I think it was Hertz. Uh, yeah. uh, and he had a, 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 little, a little booth there in one of the hotels we would go to. And uh, he he remembered me, you know. He yeah. didn't, didn't know me by, you know, we weren't right. buddies or anything. Right. Yeah, he knew who I was, right. and so the whole thing was shocking. And this whole case was just phenomenal. Yeah. It was just an unbelievable time, long, long hours, right. long, long hours. Right. And, and uh, my job was to whatever the main story of the day that came out of there. Uh -huh. Well, that's that's what I wound up doing, uh -huh. and that's what well, I did. Well, it was yeah, it was it was just crazy for you know because. You know, we all liked him, right? And you know, we're yeah. we're the processing. Did he really do this? And mm -hmm. we had to get good stories from like people like you. Yeah. And yeah. I would think yeah. the tough part, from like a reporter standpoint, is that you're competing with all this media mm -hmm. from around the world, and yeah. that's that's a unique situation. It was itself. tough. I, I mean, you know, we we um, I've never been in a situation where we had that many competitive people trying to get the same story, mm -hmm. and you know, the the big boys would always. Yeah move in there and what have you, and <laughs> all the celebrities and, and what have you. And it, it, it was it was unlike any story I've ever covered. I don't think there'll be another case like it. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there'll be another personality quite like, like right. OJ. Right. And yet, at, at the very beginning, um, I, I, I don't know if people were shocked at the way the, the media covered the story, but I mean, OJ was a phenom. Yeah. You know, I mean, he had yeah. long been done with his playing career and right. everything. Right. But the commercials kept them on television, and right. just the whole brutality of the, the whole thing. Well, you, you, like I said, we, you liked him. I mean, we, we all thought, hey, this is OJ. Mm -hmm. And then you're right. It's like, no, he couldn't have done this. He was on the naked gun. He was like, that goofy personality. Yeah, 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 was all kinds of stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, Dave, so what was, I mean, those are, you know, some of the big stories, too. What were 
What were some of your favorite stories that you covered? I mean, do you have any, any collection or reflection on, on some of that, that that you say, hey, I'm glad I did that, even though yeah, you, know, I, you I, mentioned the toy thing. That's that's a nothing story, yet it's important, right? And it changed the dynamics and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, any other favorite type of stories? Oh, I, I remember one time I did a story. A, a friend of mine called me up and said, hey, you had to do a feature story on this guy. Uh, he, he plays Santa Claus. And the nicest guy in the world. I mean, he was just, I mean, he really thought he was Santa Claus. He yeah. had the beard and the hat and his wife and the, <laughs> I mean, he, he was a real character. Uh, I had that. I mean, some of the more memorable stories, I mean, uh, uh, little David Rothenberg, remember? Remember that yeah. story? Oh, kid? yeah. yeah. I oh, mean, wow. Uh, I, I remember taking him to a, uh, I set up a, a, a trip to a, a big toy manufacturing oh, wow. store. And, and we we got he picked whatever he wanted to pick yeah. on that. What a, what a what a sweet sweet little boy. Right. Um, you know, it just it just goes on and on and on. Uh, I remember covering the the opening of the uh, Crystal Cathedral when uh, Robert Schuller oh, opened yeah. up the cathedral, and yeah. I'm in an elevator riding up with him, and he <laughs> nudges me in the rib cage. He was a very nice man to me, yeah. and and he goes, so, so what do you think of my glass shack? You know, yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, and, um, that's interesting. And, I mean, it's interesting to hear that. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just it goes on and on and on. I mean, I, I remember one time I covered a story. He got a lot of publicity. City, there was a, a goose named they could name him Beep Beep the Goose, and he got his beak bitten off, and they actually reattached it. <laughs> and we, I remember standing out, out out in front of the uh, the hospital there when they were doing the the the, the, the operation on Beep yeah. the Goose. Oh I'm, doing, I'm doing a, a, a story almost you know moment by moment is, is Beep going to make it get a new. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, yeah. How do, how do you pick the stories? I mean, you have you know I'm kind of curious how. Do, your day starts off, and news is, you know, every day is something new. Right. But how does how does your normal day go? I mean, especially, you know, you were a senior reporter the last so many years, so or for many years. So how? But how does your day go? Well, a lot of my stuff, I I, I would pick my own stories. Okay. I, I had that, you know. But you know, obviously, you, you don't do it by yourself. Right. But you know, you would always have a morning meeting. You call in the morning meeting. Usually, lasted between eight and eight thirty. You would call in. I was very lucky. I didn't have to make the drive from Downey. Yeah. Into LA. Right. I mean, I uh, because I uh, I covered the Orange County area. I'd go straight out to Orange County, or else something in LA would be happening. But you know, you uh, you had a lot of people that would call you on tips. Some would be good, some wouldn't be good. Uh, you, uh, I was fortunate for most of my career, the latter part of the career, uh, I always got what they consider to be the, bot, the the big story of the day. Yeah. You know, and so um, you know, it has to be interesting. Uh, you can't just put something on the air right. that you think is good right. because you got to appeal. I mean, somebody living in the valley has to care about what's happening in South Central LA. You yeah. have to make it interesting on, on why and, and yeah. when. Uh, you know, there's been so many many memorable stories. Uh, got the, the the earthquake, the San Francisco earthquake was one. I remember on, on on that story, uh, I had uh, been doing a lot of traveling doing a lot of different stories and I promised my boy we were going to watch the World Series game uh, and yeah. uh, then uh, the next day I play catch. Yeah. Okay, well sure enough, uh, yeah. here comes the earthquake and I'm gone 12 days. Oh, and, wow. Uh, oh wow. Uh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, that, that was incredible. On that one, I had never seen such destruction in my life. When I pulled into Oakland, saw yeah. the Nimitz Freeway and that the freeway just collapsed. Yeah. Yeah. People something. were stuck in between yeah. there. Uh, it was yeah. awful, just plain awful. Well, Dave, when you lived in Downey, did you ever try to promote Downey stories? Did you try to cover Downey stories? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I I was real careful because I knew so many people. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I didn't want to be uh, you know uh, accused of uh, favoritism <laughs> or anything yeah. like that. But no, if something happened in Downey and, and they and I made it a, I made no secret about the mm -hmm. fact that's where I live. So whenever something happened, I mean, like the, the we were talking about the, the the murder where four people were shot. Yeah. You know, uh, I was in the area and I was just the logical guy to cover it. But uh, you know, to say uh, to promote it, no. I mean, I I can't say I. I, I tried not to do stories where I would, you know, be a huckster. You know, mm -hmm. it had to be a news catch. Yeah. I'll tell you one story I did in Downey. Uh, years and years ago, uh, the Downey Hospital wanted to promote uh, the dangers of drunk driving. This was, mm -hmm. MAD was just starting out, Mother's right. Day drunk driving. Right. So they wanted to have a big promotion type thing. Uh -huh. So they convinced me on a Saturday to go over there, have a few drinks, and then try to drive a car on a course. Well, I mean, I... <laughs> I, drank, I, I drank way too much. I, I knocked down every cone at the end of the day, at the end of the, the ride, after I knocked down every single cone, I think I got out of the car and put the cone on top of my head. And my wife was furious. Oh, my wife and my kids were little at the time, they were watching. <laughs> and fortunately for me, the guy who covered, who did the story for the station, uh -huh. he had a crew there, 
he he took it easy on me. He could have really, really. <laughs> <laughs> I had such a hangover, and, oh. and, and, and I, I said to myself, why did I do that? <laughs> one, of, one of the great moments that I'll regret. Oh, that's later. interesting. That's interesting. Dave, so one of the things we were just talking offline is, what, I don't know if this is frustrating for you as a reporter. You do a story, you get this, you get everything done, you do all the editing, and then what happens in Southern California, the car chase that takes over the entire news hour. I so, love the car chases. Oh my god! I have an app on my phone that alerts me when there's a car chase happening. Oh, oh my well, god! Well, you're not the only one. <laughs> the, the one great, the, the one great phenomena of television, and the one thing that changed. You know, when, you got to remember when I started the business, uh -huh. it was cameras. Right. It was cameras and film, right. Okay. Right. and a sound man. You had to ca a cameraman attached like an umbilical cord to the sound man, uh -huh. and it was film. And you had to be careful. This is 1972. Right. You had to be careful that you didn't shoot too much because you had to develop the film, the film house. Oh my goodness. And you had to wait when the film developed, then you take it to the station, oh they edit goodness. it and get it on the air. Wow. Okay. Wow. So th there was in no way you can cover yeah. anything like that because you couldn't go live. It was yeah. too much. It was yeah. too bulky. Okay. Yeah. Then they invented this great technique where you can put up a, a camera on, on the helicopter and you can get a receiver and you can get an instant signal. And that, that changed everything. They did. That changed wow. everything. And, 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 and the thing is, people get they get engrossed with this. I mean, yeah. there are times when the ratings go five, six, seven. They multiply by yeah. you know, whatever, and that's what they do. Now there was a time, one of the stations, I believe it was Channel Four, had made a vow they weren't going to cover car speed chases anymore. Uh, yeah, that didn't last. Very no, long. we didn't need the ratings. <laughs> that didn't last. Very so, long. so yeah. you as a professional reporter, so between us on there, when you when a car says you're like. Damn! <laughs> no, no, no. It, it, it was true. No, it would you know. it would frustrate the living daylight out of you because you know you were, especially especially if it happened like three minutes before you're going to go on here. Yeah. Or what I used to. And hate you're it. out there do, yeah. getting ready to do something live, yeah. so you're yeah. mentally yeah. into it. Yeah, and it and it's happened before. Uh, I, I remember one time I'm, I'm right in the middle of a live shot, uh -huh. and it cut out right in the middle of. I had to uh -huh. finish my story because it went all car chase. You know, I, I tell you what, and. But but that's just what people want. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and some are good, some are boring. You know, yeah. whatever it is. I mean, I, I, I myself, I kick myself when I start watching them. Yeah. I say, what am I doing this for? Yeah. But it's it, it's. You want to see how it ends, right? Yeah. I want to see how yeah. the crazy yeah. car flipping over. Yeah. Yeah. But the ridiculous I, thing. And, and I I mean, there are times when there are some. They're so wild. Yeah. I mean, I've been involved where they say, okay, try to. I mean, I, I I didn't chase the car. But right. I mean, I'm pretty damn close to it. Right. Know? Right. Uh, but no, it, it's one of my. It was one of my pet peeves. Right. I, I just could not take it. That, and and during the pandemic, in the early days of the pandemic, when the governor and the mayor would go on TV every single day yeah. and repeat each other. Right. Yeah. I mean, my God, you would just sit there and you wait and you wait and you wait yeah. until they were done. You know that that yeah. was that was stuff. But no, the car chases is a great phenomenon. Uh, as long as they have the ability to go live like that, they're, they're going to they're gonna show it. Very early in my career, uh, when I went to uh, when I covered uh, Orange County, when I was uh, changed over there, that was 1978. There was a chief in Anaheim named Harold Bastrop, and he made this big pronouncement that he was no longer going to allow his Anaheim p uh, police <laughs> department to get involved in high speed chases. If a high speed chase came into your city. Fine, Highway Patrol could take over, but it wasn't going to be Anaheim anymore. Oh my God, the uproar, the cost. Yeah, you know, I almost lost his job over that. Yeah. I had a big city council meeting, the whole bit, I covered it live. Three to two, he kept his job. I'll never forget that. But, wow. uh, but you know, it's, it's just the way of the world. I mean, uh, but it's frustrating. Right. Now, I always said, I always said, okay, let's suppose <laughs> that one of the networks has a big sport event on. Okay, let, let, like CBS, okay? Right. Let's say they're showing. The NCAA basketball game. Yeah. Okay. And there was a massive high-speed car chase. I'm not gonna break into yeah. that. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, exactly. So do you really need that? Um, so uh, how many years were you at CBS or in, in TV business? I started in TV in 1972. Okay. Um, I started on uh, April the 12th, 1972, at uh, K KHJ, mm -hmm. and I I, I, I was in, I was in San Diego very briefly. And then I got hired at CBS in uh, June, June 13th, 1977, and I stayed there until I retired on uh, June 30th of uh, 2020. And so let's talk about your retirement. What was that? How did you make the decision to retire? Well, I, I was going to call it quits. Um, I had just returned from a long overseas trip, and um, we had a Christmas party. And then the next day, I was going to sleep in and just take my time and do things. And that's when Kobe was killed in the, uh, in the uh, helicopter crash. Yeah. And 
I. Uh, it was January, right? Yeah, January, January, yeah, January of uh, 19, um, what, 2020? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, right, 20, right before yeah, COVID. The, 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 yeah. yeah, the last Sunday of January. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I uh, was sleeping, I wasn't feeling all that good, and I got a call and they wanted me to go. Do, I knew they were going to ha have me go out there to Calabasas. Yeah. And I begged off because I, I just I just hadn't felt well and I was a little tired and I said, look, I'll, I know this is going to be a big story for right. quite a few weeks, right. so let me be fresh. And, and anyway. In the old days, <clears throat> nothing would have stopped me. Yeah. Nothing would have stopped me. And, and I, 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 at that time, I started saying to myself, you know, maybe I should really restart thinking about how much longer I want to do this. And then I put a list of what I wanted to cover. And I was going to call my agent and say, I, I want to cover, well, the All-Star Game was going to be at Dodger Stadium that year. Yeah. I wanted to cover the All-Star Game. Uh, SoFi was going to open up, right. but until they delayed it for a year, right. and I wanted to cover that. Uh, I wanted to cover the election. Uh, didn't know who was right. going to run, but right. you know, I wanted to cover the election. Right. And then I wanted to ca cap it off by covering the inauguration. And then I was going to retire on my birthday, February of uh, 2021. Oh wow! And then COVID hit. Yeah. And that changed everything. Right. Uh, changed the way we covered. See, I, I was 72 at the time. And the governor comes on TV. Are you really? Yeah. God, I should have put two. And I didn't know that. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think that's why we're asking about Tyree because you're so vibrant. Well, and you know, well, thank you. You thank would you. know it. I was, <laughs> I was I was 24 years old when I started in Los Angeles, and I was very lucky because I never had to go work in some little hodunk town. I mean, I didn't yeah. have to go to you know these little dinky towns that so many reporters break into. I was yeah. very lucky. I didn't and people have to look up and wait to get yeah. to yeah. LA. Yeah. I mean, I, move, I mean right? my, my first job was Los Angeles, oh, my which is yeah. almost unheard of today. Right. You know. Right. So, but but at the age of seventy-two and, and having covered it for so long and what have you, and then the, the governor says anyone over the age of sixty-five is not going to be allowed to get out of your house and work. Blah 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 blah. I said, wait, what are you talking about? You know, I'm, six, I'm not going to stay in my house. You're out of your mind. You know. So I started working and and we, we worked out a plan so that I had the same camera person and we, I I covered the briefings uh, remotely. You right. couldn't go inside after a while. Right. You know, and then all right. it, it was a, it was a miserable time. To cover stories because of the way the COVID right. changed everything. Right. And they, and I'm sorry, but you don't seem like a Zoom person. No, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I hated Zoom. Yeah. I, hate, I hate Zoom. I hated the the uh, you know Instagram and all this other stuff. Social media. I'm not a social media guy. I'm just not. You know, Don Hewitt, uh, the the one who created 60 Minutes, said it perfectly. Yeah. He says, "I'm a 20th century man being dragged into the 21st century," yeah. and that's the way I felt. You yeah. know, but anyway. Um, <laughs> things things right. changed dramatically. The the, the station uh, in early May, the general manager came out and made me an offer. Said that you know we're bleeding red ink and you've been around a long time. We don't want you to take this offer, but we're offering blah blah blah. Right. And it was just too good to pass up. Yeah. And I said you know the time is right. I might as well take it. And uh, and okay. that was it. My agent, uh, I called my agent and told him what they offered me, and he said, well I hope you change your mind. I hope you said yes before they changed their mind. Yeah. And so that that was it. But um, yeah, I mean, COVID's sort of pushed it a little bit, right? Uh, but I, I, I was ready. Great, I was ready. Right. Well, Dave, where can we get your book? Tell yeah, us. Book and, and there, when, by the way, when did you start writing it? Was it? Had you already decided to retire, or what was the process? The time. Well, well I knew I was. I ever since I was in this business, uh, I, I kept you, you know those little uh, those little uh, daily uh, calendars that you buy yeah, every yeah. year. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I have I have forty eight of those. <laughs> and every story that I ever covered, I put a little note down on what I covered. Oh, and wow. so I, I, I always wanted to write a book. Okay. I didn't know what form it was going to be or whatever. Mm -hmm. So when I retired, uh, I said, I, I, I'm, I'm going to do it. And uh, I um, made some con calls to people that I knew who who written books. And they gave me some ideas. And uh, I retired in June of 2020. In September of 2020, we started putting everything together. And uh, COVID slowed things down a little bit, right? But uh, it's it's ready, and it'll be available on Amazon. And uh, the uh, I, I did a uh, uh, what do you call those uh, audio book? Right. That's going to be available as oh, well. Oh, that's great. So so on, on Amazon and uh, and uh, Barnes and Noble. Right. Right. There's the book. It's available on April the nineteenth. It's, it's a great. It's a great life if, if you, you don't, don't weaken. weaken. Uh, awesome. Family, faith, and forty-eight years on television. Uh, well, we're looking and, forward and, to. And uh, you know, there's some stuff in Downey. I mean, I talk about things that happened in Downey, and there's a lot of, a lot of pictures in the book, and uh, you know, it's. Uh, I've already pre-ordered my book, okay. so that's a good point. You don't have to wait for the book to come oh, out. Oh yeah, yeah, you can pre-order. Pre yeah, pre oh, that's great. Yeah. I'm going to be be doing that. I look and, forward. And then, to uh, I just said that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then uh, you know, I I had a, uh, 
uh, a wonderful relationship with a local church here in, uh, in Downey. My, my wife uh, passed away, and uh, it's, it's, I, I chronicle it in the book. She had a very debilitating yeah. disease. It was a very tough time. Uh, and so I'm going to have a, a little book signing uh, the week before Memorial Day weekend at the church. Oh, and, and uh, the yeah, that's okay. and we'll have that at the church here in Dallas. Is that, is that the same church that Meredith Perkins? Yeah, yes. yeah, Mer yeah, Mer yeah, Mer Meredith. Yeah, yeah, yeah Meredith was Meredith is a wonderful man. Oh. I mean, he knew I, Meredith knew I was writing a book. Uh, you know, God rest his soul. He was just a just a great, great uh, guy. He was, a, lot he of, was, a, lot, a lot of wonderful people. You know, that that's the one thing in, in my career. I've been extremely fortunate to have met so many people that are just good, down to earth people. Yeah, you know, and it's nice. And, and I, I try to capture some of this in the book. And, well, we're looking forward to it. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Just a quick shout out because you, you say that you're not a social media person, but you've been posting videos on Twitter and on Facebook, and they're good. They're <laughs> Thank <you>. quality <laughs> reporting. So I think you're kind of downplaying that. Well, we're doing great. Only reporters think. know it's quality reporting. We just <laughs> like it. Okay, see? I'm, uh, yeah, I, I, I do a once a week uh, uh, Facebook report. And like I said, I've had people approach me to want to do a podcast. And have I might do that. I'm not sure. But mm -hmm. see, like I said, I worked from the time I was 12 until I was 72, yeah. and I never dreamed that I would enjoy doing nothing. Yeah, and I do. I really enjoy. Well, it. good. Well, and you've I'm, earned it. You deserved it. And well, thank you. you know, we, you've uh, you've been a mainstay here in the Downey community and watching you on TV for 50 years. Yeah. Well, thank you. Appreciate so, it. Well, listen, it's been great having Dave Lopez, the Dave Lopez here with us on there. He, uh, we talked about his book. We talked about some great stories on there. And Dave, thank you so much for being here. It's oh, an honor, and, and we consider you one of our, uh, our locals forever. Well, thank yeah. you. I appreciate that. So, I appreciate that. Um, no, anyways, no, 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 no. so we're going to be wrapping up. Hold up the book, Eric. It's a Great Life If You Don't Weekend by Dave Lopez, uh, Amazon, and Barnes & Noble. Oh, great, great. And audio so, if you want to, you know, if you listen to And audio, voice. too. Yeah. So... So thank you, Dave, okay, for being here. We appreciate it. So folks, uh, send us some more suggestions, some thoughts and ideas. Uh, this is a little bit special with our great guest, uh, Dave Lopez. But there's a lot of topics, a lot of things going on in Downey. We'll cover that on our next podcast. It's all downhill from here. It's How gonna, do we go from Dave Lopez from, to... To talking about the city <laughs> that stuff that right now. Anyway, <laughs> so so thank you for, uh, for listening and watching Talking Downey with Mario. And Eric.